Greetings, the fine people. It's your old friend Relic here, reporting to you once again from my one-room log cabin on the cold northern shores of Upper Lake Canada. You know, back in my day, if a person wanted to see the bearded lady or gawk at the half-man, half-woman, well, you'd probably have to spend a whole nickel and buy a ticket to the carnival sideshow. But nowadays, all you gotta do is go to some place they call Eurovision. Either that, or visit the woman's washroom facilities at any North Carolina Target department store. Now, I'm told there are several ways one could describe these curious fellows uh, who've adopted the free-thinking, alternative-dressing lifestyle like unique or eccentric colorful or mentally ill. Take me for example. You all may have noticed I've decided to break with tradition for the show today and replace my usual plaid flannel lumberjack shirt for this fancy garment here made of lace and finery. The reason for this is because, well, if I ever do get invited out for dinner, just once, I'd love to follow the rest of the gals into the ladies' room to powder my nose and dish on all the latest celebrity gossip and maybe trade a few recipes and make sure our eyebrows are on fleek. I'm not sure what that even means, but alas, I probably wouldn't get away with it anyway on a account of my robust, ginger-flecked, snow-white Castro beard here, and the, the small fact that I seem to be missing the requisite number of ovaries. Ah, truth be told, as a man, I don't really belong anywhere near the woman's washroom, even if my wardrobe does happen to be the latest fashion designer trend taken fresh off the runways of Paris. You know, that reminds me, I was actually photographed once on the runways of Paris. Almost got crushed by a Boeing 747. Sacre bleu, c'est incroyable. Say, isn't that the guy who invented freedom fries? Speaking of the good old U.S. of A., there appears to be some ruckus down there a few months ago over something they call the transgender bathroom issue. I'm not really sure I understand it all, but I believe it can be summed up as the right for men in dresses to use a woman's toilet. I don't know. This trend towards gender flexibility doesn't seem quite fair to all the billions of us men who normally wear pants, because, well, our excretory options are now only half of those enjoyed by our more fabulous brethren. I mean, think of poor Bubba Redneck, who, ah, after finishing his 17th Bud Light at the local NASCAR race, standing there in the outhouse line with the rest of his cousins, well, nowadays, all Bubba's got to do is pull a full-length Versace dress over top his sleeveless Donald Trump t-shirt. Lo and behold, he can skip right to the front of the ladies' queue. Now, from what I've heard, this whole hullabaloo surrounding uh, transgender bathrooms centers around what uh, Sigmund Freud would call identification, which, according to an unnamed panel of Birkenstock-wearing radical feminists in the LGBTQRSTUVW community proposes that if a man believes strongly enough that he's a woman, well then by a simple wave of some magic libertarian wand, he actually becomes a 100% bona fide female. Kind of reminds me of a, of a neighbor I had once who convinced himself he was Napoleon Bonaparte. He was so completely identified with the notorious 18th century French emperor that he was often spotted around our little town riding a horse in full military regalia. Ah, sure, he was nutty as a fruitcake, but I'll say one thing for him. 
Our local neighborhood watch committee was never more organized. True story. Ah, oh, he was harmless enough, the silly old bugger. As long as you kept off his lawn and spoke to him politely in old French. Me oui. C'est impeccable. You know, I have a suspicion that feller there might be the reason why they call it Gay Perry. Ah, go ahead and say I'm old-fashioned and out of touch. But there appears to be no limit to how far folks will go these days to become the very thing they identify with. Like, well, for example, consider this peculiar trans-type person who has had his ears and nose surgically removed in order to become the Dragon Lady. Now, I'm no expert on reptiles, but that's a genuine cold-blooded lizard if I've ever seen one. So I gotta ask you, what's the difference then between this crazy-ass dude and say someone more famous like Caitlyn Jenner? I mean, aside from both being monstrous aberrations of nature, when? In 2015, Caitlyn Jenner, the former manly man Olympian athlete, was chosen by Glamour magazine as Woman of the Year. <laughs> Go figure. Whereas on the other hand, Lizard Freak over there will be lucky to appear in the back pages of Herpetology Monthly. And what about this curious young fella who spent seven years turning himself into a platypus? This is incontrovertible proof that the almighty God, however non-existent, sometimes does make mistakes. You know, I was even thinking about visiting a plastic surgeon myself one day to, to have my entire brain removed, you know, for cosmetic reasons. That way I could be free to run around all over the place playing Pokemon Go and spouting asinine catchphrases like, Make America Great Again. Yeah, according to Wikipedia, which as everybody knows is always 100% factual, there are approximately 63 different gender combinations in the world today. And I'm suspecting that the cabal of androgynous libertarians driving this unnatural agenda would probably have every corporate box store in America provide a different bathroom for each one of them. But when does it end? I mean, what about them weird folks who identify as trans species? You know, they spend all their time acting as human pets. I suppose every Walmart will now have to include a giant litter box for these special creatures. And then I think about all them poor kids attending Comic-Con who identify as their favorite superhero alien robot space wizard. I mean, it almost goes without saying that Klingons and Stormtroopers should be given their own separate bathrooms. I mean, God forbid, if Star Wars and Star Trek accidentally happened to share the same universe, the entire fabric of reality might implode. Kids these days, the lines between genders have become so blurry that even an enormous astronomical telescope couldn't bring it into focus. I would guess it'd be kind of like playing a game of Schrodinger's genitalia, where they exist in some unknown quantum state of being both male and female, and then you never know what you're going to find until you peek inside the lid of that particular Pandora's box. Hell, being over a hundred years old, I know my memory ain't great, but if I'm ever in doubt as to whether I'm male or female, I usually just take a gander beneath my long underwear. Ah, I'm pragmatic like that. It's a little known fact that if Jesus were alive today, even he too would be confused as to which bathroom to use. I mean, his Middle Eastern tunic could be considered a kind of dress. Heck, you know times are strange when even our Lord and Savior doesn't know where to take a leak. Sure, he could walk on water, but he can't hold it in forever. The last option, I suppose, would be to just let people urinate wherever the hell they want. You know, like they do in Paris. I mean, 
Who needs a designated pissoir when the nearest alleyway or sidewalk or street corner will do? Mon Dieu, c'est formidable. Hey, isn't that the French ambassador to America? Or it could be the American ambassador to France. It's kind of hard to tell them apart these days. Indeed. It's a brave new world, kids. We might as well go ahead and proclaim it to be Halloween 365 days a year. Next thing you know, they're going to be trying to convince us that the Earth is flat. You know, from where I sit, the one thing that seems to be missing from all these bathroom shenanigans is that rare human element. One that's in seemingly short supply these days, judging by the comments I'm always seeing on Crackbook. It's something the scientific experts used to call, what was it? Oh yeah, common sense. Really the only relevant factor worth considering when choosing which privy to use is, to put it bluntly, what kind of junk is being stored in the trunk? Shouldn't matter what clothes a person wears or who identifies as whatnot, let's let the specific hardware, you know, located just below that full bladder, determine the proper choice of bathroom. You know, I don't mind really if a transsexual fisherman has decided to trade his camouflage hip waders for a pair of patent leather neon pink stiletto pumps. That's his business. But as long as that fisherman still carrying his rod and tackle underneath that fancy new frock, he really belongs in the men's bathroom. And I got nothing against the mechanic who has decided to replace his greasy overalls with a gold-studded Giorgio Armani evening gown. And maybe this feller even went so far as to have a couple of them deluxe airbags installed up front. What I'm saying is as long as that mechanic still has a dipstick under the hood, he too belongs in the little boy's room. If you ask me, the only reasonable time a person who's born a man should be found in a woman's washroom is if he's already undergone the full meal surgical deal. The extreme makeover, you know, replacing his Audi with an innie. That seems like a fair and reasonable compromise to me. Even though I must say it still remains a mystery why any man would willingly give up that singular masculine ability to write love letters in the snow, if you catch my drift. Okay, sirrah, sirrah. This simple proposal provides the most practical solution to the problem and takes into account the comfort, safety, and peace of mind of the other 99.9% .9 of the population who, like the rest of us, in all honesty, aren't really concerned about what gender, animal, or fictional character you happen to identify with, as long as everybody minds their own business and generally act as decent human beings. Seems we're all so terrified of potentially offending this very small minority of genderly discombobulated looney tunes you know, the ones irregularly gracing the covers of celebrity puff magazines who spend most of their alone time probably being mortified by the sight of their own gonads. That we have to tiptoe around censoring ourselves from pointing out the blatantly obvious that this whole ridiculous charade is just another example of political correctness gone mad and serves only as a distraction for more important, pressing global issues. Seems to me like a, a deliberate attempt by the powers that be and their media lackeys to divert our attention away from the ongoing crimes of the present Orwellian government. That, and of course the little matter of humanity's approaching extinction by cometary impact. But don't pay any attention to that. Well, what do you know? Seems like I've managed to poke fun at a whole diverse and different range of folks today. You got your literate Bible-thumping redneck American conservative housewives to your androgynous libertarian cross-dressing carnival circus nerds from France. 
Hell, I guess that makes me kind of a, an equal opportunity offender. Well, if I inadvertently hurt anyone's feelers with my little rant here today, then you still have a hankering to voice a complaint, well, by all means go ahead and send a message to I don't give a damn what you think at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah, that'll fix them. Fix them good. Well, that's all I gotta say about that prickly subject. It looks like it's time for me to make like a hockey player and get the puck out of here. So, until next time, it's your old friend Relic throwing another log on the fire and saying, always remember, keep your feet on the ground and your eyes on the stars. Oh,